بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Since September 2019 the Islamic Education Trust Human Welfare Department has positively touched over 6500 lives through its intervention program the food aid program the financial aid program Qurbani meat distribution during Eid al-Adha widows empowerment program the orphan care program and the tree planting program for this good work to continue and be sustained we need your continuous support jazakumullah khairan as we look forward to your generous donation assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi you are welcome to our program marriage and contemporary realities my name is ibrahim yahya in this episode which is the fourth episode we will be discussing the rights of wife or both her husband and with me in the studio to do justice to this uh, discussion is uh, sheikh muhammad isa ali sheikh you are welcome thank you very much أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى والأمين المجتبى نبينا محمد عليه عبد الصلاة والتسليم على الأربعة الخلفاء على إمة الحنفاء وعلى من سار إلى نهجهم واكتفى أثرهم إلى من دين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته just as it has been introduced this is our fourth episode on the topic marriage and contemporary realities and today's episode shall inshallah be on the rights of wife upon her husband if we carefully observe one of the major things that cause problem between couples after marriage is a problem of confusing rights and responsibilities whether this one thought this isn't part of his rights or part of her responsibilities and therefore there is always misunderstanding between her wife and her husband and there are a lot of expectations that confuse a lot of issues now by knowing the rights of a wife upon her husband there will be mutual respect and everybody will know what he's supposed to do and the right time he should do uh, they'll take care of his responsibilities with regard to marriage marriage is not a joke and that is why allah said wa qad akhastum min hunna mithaqan baliza you should know that you have already taken a heavy covenant between you and your wives and Islam extols the status of wives. And Islam has also protected her status when it comes to marriage. And the manner at which Islam protects the status of wives can be summarized in the following ways. The first thing is that it's part of the rights or one of the rights of a wife to be paid the dowry. Allah said in Surah An-Nisa verse 4, wa atu nisaa sadaqati hinna nihla. And give women on marriage their dowry as an obligation. So that is already a right that she cannot become your wife until you give her the dowry. And it is her own property the dowry. not given you can either something you can give it to someone else it is for the wife specifically so this is the first condition that islam has put laid down for somebody who wants to marry a woman and it is part of her rights the second thing is that it is the right of the wife to be fed she may be richer than the husband but It is her right to be fed. She may decide 
to assist in one way or the other. Or they may have some mutual understanding between her and her husband. But he shouldn't forget that it is her right. In these days of ours, a lot of marriages face problems with regard to issues like this. A husband may say, my wife is earning more than I do. So it is not my duty to feed her. But Islam says, it is your duty to feed her. In an authentic hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Ala an taksuwaha wa tutimaha. That you should clothe her and feed her as well. So the second, the third one is clothing. You should provide clothing for your wife. And that, that is relative. It's not that, no, you can compare yourself with somebody that is by far richer than you. No. Based on what you can afford, but you should know that this is part of her rights and that it is part of your duty to do it. You cannot use any excuse to say that, no, she has somebody that can do that for her, or she has the means, or she is wealthy. No. Even if you want her to come in, let it be something that she decides on her own. But not that these rights have shifted from the husband to the wife. The fourth right of a wife is that you should provide shelter for your wife. Even that of shelter is related. If you are a multimillionaire or a billionaire, there's a kind of house that you know is befitting for somebody of, of your caliber and that you should do for your, that you should ensure that your family enjoys because you can afford it. And that's why Surah so Al-Baqarah was 236, Allah said, But bestow on them comfort the wealthy according to his means and the poor according to his means. So the feeding, the clothing, the provision of shelter, all is relative according to your means. And that is why in Islam we're not allowed to pretend. Then the next thing that we should know, which is very, very paramount with regard to the rights of a wife, is politeness. Allah said in Surah Nisa verse 19, And you should live with your wives on a footing of kindness and equity. That you should be very kind of unto them. And the Prophet Sallallahu even said with regard to women that they are created out of a, a, a bit flexible so be lenient upon her, you will enjoy your stay with her. It is very, very important to know that this issue of politeness affects almost all facets of marital life. Is it the way you talk to her? Is it the way you, you relate with her own relatives? It, is it the way you provide something to her? It should be extremely friendly, that is what it means. You can imagine the way the Prophet speaks to his wives. Even Aisha, who is, whose whom the name is clear that it is Aisha, but the Prophet because out of politeness, at times he calls her, he calls her Aish, just to make her feel at home with him. And that's why he said, "Khairukum, khairukum li ahlihi wa ana khairukum li ahli. He Said the best of you is the one that is best to his family. I am, I am best to my own family. And this is what Adish also said, and almost all of his wives, with regard to the way he handles them. He talks gently. He, he handles them with some, some care and concern. And he makes them feel happy. Then the next one is the right to satisfy her desire which is one of the major bases for marriage. They call it Hakul Firash. That is one of the major rights of a wife. 
and it is very important in the house of Islam. A lot of people feel I'm too busy, I travel a lot. So I have given them enough money, they, whatever they need is there. So my presence doesn't matter much. It happens to a lot of very busy people, or even those that are not busy, but because they're careless, they feel no. I can spend many months before I could come and just see my family briefly, but I will ensure whatever they need, I give it to them. No, it is part of her right. And that right can even lead to divorce if it reaches a certain extent, if you don't fulfill that right as a husband. Now, it's part of the rights of your wife that you shouldn't be suspicious as a husband. That you shouldn't, shouldn't treat a wife with suspicion. Though it's a two-way issue, but that of a husband to start suspecting his wife, now you are encroaching into her own rights and you are doing something that Islam does not permit you to do. The Prophet said in the hadith, hadith. He said you should distance your way from suspicion because suspicion is the most dishonest thing that you can do with regard to speech. That I suspect this person, this is what it means. Be very, very clear and straightforward. If you are suspecting, ask her. You made a, a statement. What do you mean by that statement? So that I don't understand you in the wrong way. Oh, you see, you saw how somebody, maybe they are talking. Okay, I, I was passing and I saw you with social person. She will now explain. No, that person was social person. And this is what we are explaining. And as soon as she explains that, you shouldn't have any left over at the bottom of your heart. Just take it that way. And that's what will make marriage very interesting and as it should be. It's part of the right of a wife that you should joke with her. The Prophet said, Well, I can dare her to be her three times in the hadith. Be, be playful, that is, joke with your, heart, hey, your wife. Ta'ishbiha, you enjoy your stay with her. So some people are not smilish, they don't know how to joke, they don't, they're not friendly. And that is already part of their rights that they are supposed to fulfill in Islam. Now another right of a wife is he should not expose her secrets. In an authentic idea, the Prophet said, وَلَا يُقَبِّهِ وَلَا يَحْجُرْ إِلَّا فِي الْبَيْتِ And you shouldn't say the darker sides of your wife. That's making her look ugly in the eyes of people call it by attitude or whatever because even if she annoys you you should not migrate out of the house you should be within the house what is the essence of that so that nobody knows what's happening you don't go out and tell somebody that this is why i left the house no it's within the house and it's between you and her so you should not expose your wife's secret another one is religious training people think you know i have clothed her i've given her everything she needs to I don't have any other task, you know. In Surah Taha, verse 132, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَسْتَبِرَ عَلَيْهَا And they enjoined your family to pray or to, 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 to practice salat and be constant there. And you should persevere in, in, in this issue because it's difficult. It is very, very difficult to ensure that they, they practice religion. And even another hadith, the Prophet said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun ara'iyyati. Each of you, one of you is a husband, and each one of you will be asked at the day of judgment on that. Now, lastly, is that he should be jealous for his wife. That is, you see your wife with this man, you see her with that one, and you say you don't care, no. You must be jealous. The Prophet said, At the youth of Inar, the pimp will dwell in her fire. So, and again, there should, if you have more than one wife, justice comes in. It's part of their right that you should be just. The Prophet sallam, one of his wives was saying, He uses to distribute them between us, but he's always just. And it was narrated again in another hadith, whereby one of the wives of the, uh, of the Prophet sallam, whenever he distributes things equally, Amongst his wife, he said, Allahumma hadha qasami fi ma amlikuhu, fa la talumni fi ma tamlikuhu, wa la amlikuhu. He said, oh Allah, this is the best I can do. 
with regards to sharing what I have. So do not hold me responsible for that which I cannot do. That is absolute justice. It's only Allah that can practice absolute justice. What we do is collective justice. So may Allah make the little we have said serve as witness for us, not witness against us. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Um, thank you very much, Sheikh Mohammed uh, uh, Isa Ali and uh, viewers. Uh, shortly, we'll go on a short break and we'll come back and we'll continue our discussion.